Well, as promised, this is the epilogue to the Journey Back to Music series where we explore the processes, the writing, the samples, the plugins, the VSTs, and the people involved in making this one track called Journey come to life. Well, my name's Oliver, and back in November, I did this Journey Back to Music series where I spent four episodes back then talking about some of the emotional issues, mental health issues in my life that were keeping me from writing music and some of the nasty writer's block I've experienced over the last 18 months. At the end of that series, made a track called Journey, released it, it's on all streaming platforms. If you haven't heard it yet, feel free to go listen to it. Today, we're gonna do an epilogue where I talk about the process. How did I write this thing? How did I produce it? What sample libraries, what synthesizers, what VSTs, effects, what did I use to make it in the actual production process and then how did I mix it uh, how did I master it album art like just talking about that whole thing because I love it and it's super fun so without wasting any time we're gonna jump right into logic pro X where I wrote and produced this my writing process was basically sitting down at the piano right over here that if you watch the series you saw me frustrated sitting over there and coming up with the chords coming up with the changes coming up with you know everything that was gonna later be orchestrated into the rest of the piece. So looking at the top here, we have the first 12 tracks are all piano, semi-organized, semi-not. And uh, before we get into why there's 12 tracks there, mostly just because blending issues and errors and stuff like that, I used four piano sounds. The first piano sound I used was Native Instruments, The Giant. I'll go to the chorus here, we'll do a little loop here. Then I used the Simcock Felt Piano from Spitfire. That's a good one. A lot of mechanical noises in there that aren't Unicorda, because Unicorda is so popular right now, I have to move away from it. I used the Grandeur by Native Instruments, which is kind of like a baby grand. Just totally turned off the high end on it. And it's just this beautifully intimate but it didn't have enough to really drive the whole track. And then finally, same thing, just copied over and did the Una effects by themselves. Just some super subtle felt and subtle mechanics. So again, all these together, just the piano tracks. And I like the way that they blended from the super warm ones to the really bright giant. It's like there's almost some like phasing issues there in a beautiful way that created kind of a chimey high end. And it just, it spoke to me. So anyway, I moved on, did all that. And we came down here and I had some synth leads that played some of the uh, string parts. This synth right here is called Warm Smell. <laughs> It's called Warm Swell Lead. It's over in Omnisphere. And if you don't know about Omnisphere and you're in the music game, get Omnisphere right away. That's so funny, like this wouldn't sound good on its own, nor would it fit the vibe. But it's just such a bright, rich, beautiful saw wave that's layered and a bunch of verb on it, a little bit of delay, and like it just kind of comes together. So let me just unsolo, here's everything with that. So then if we move down here, there is, what, about six tracks of Ross Christopher playing, the, the cellist, and the way I produced his cello, he sent me a really, really beautiful recording of it. I just did a little bit of compression, tried to scoop out a little bit of the low and really boost the highs and get some of that like uh, gritty high-end cello sound, some of the transients there, as well as sending it to some robust reverb, the LX480, which if you don't know what that is, it's a really good reverb. So here's Ross by himself. I mean, it's a phenomenal recording, so he did great. But I actually set the output to bus 22, where I was sending all the cellos to what I called Ross bus. So all six tracks are coming here, a little bit more compression, a little bit more EQ, and then going out for stimming. But I compressed this track, double compression, and then I also added it, sent it to uh, bus 21, which if we go over to the mixer, was Ross Verb, and it was the LX480. 
The LX480 is made by Relab, and it's just a really beautifully customizable digital reverb that just, I mean, you can make the tail really, really long, which for cinematic stuff, not only does it help create the space, it just creates an ambiance. So anyway, back to Ross, fully produced in the whole thing. So then we layer, 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 and the first layer is me. Yeah. I did like, what, 12 tracks of vocals here? Just a bunch of different vocals where I'm recording in the studio, a left, center, and a right track. So, and again, I sent all my vocals output through a bus, huge send to the reverb channel, some compression, and some EQ. So this is them fully produced. You know, I wasn't even in that much of tune, but I think that added a little bit of life to the track. And I'll come down here. No, I'm not going to play the dry signal for you. <laughs> no. No, I'm not playing it. And then over here, I just did some effects, like some breathing. And so again, that's just three mono tracks of me doing like a, a breathy, windy transition. And in context, this is what that sounded like if we unsolo. So then what do I do with pads? Other Omnisphere pads, I have like, you know, 20, 30, 40 tracks of just pads. And this is where I go into Omnisphere. I find these creamy sounds that complement either the, the bed, you know, the ambiance and the environment that the song exists in, or they actually mimic a melody and their layers to a melody. And so for the most part, you know, these are just kind of creating an environment. And so if I just solo out these pads right here. So they're playing with the intro, on much higher frequencies, don't have much low end. It's just a beautiful layer of like 10 pads here. Here's the whole track. So, <clears throat> that's that. That's how we produce the track. I mean, no word from Zane. I haven't heard if they had a baby or not. So that was that. I mean, that's how we produced the whole, whole freaking thing. I mean, I just love the collaborative process because for me, I'm only, I believe I'm only as strong as my weakest link. And in this thing, you know, my weak spots are all over the place in mixing. And so to have all these other people help me was, was huge. So just to give some shout outs. Nate Happer was incredibly instrumental in actually encouraging me to do this. Zane Callister has always encouraged me to make music and has never stopped encouraging me, so he's instrumental in this as well. Grace Casey, she designed the album art. She's designed many of my album arts and all my branding stuff, and she just did a phenomenal job on this one. When I got back her, her idea of putting a mountain in the middle of my head, it like re-inspired me to write this thing and so huge shout out to her and then ross christopher was the, uh, the cellist on this thing he recorded his own cello sent it over and i put it in and mixed it and that just took this to the another level jared logan down at jtl studios in grandview missouri is the one who mixed it and then brian calhoun mastered this thing and all of which i'm just so thankful for everyone involved okay well thanks for watching if you're a music nerd i hope this really helped and uh, if you have ideas for how i could improve i'm always open to that the uh, only other video i've made about the music process was about producing st strings a couple years ago and it's like the critiques i've gotten from that video have made me so much better so i'm always open for that as always, hit subscribe. We're growing this year, 2019, and love ya.